This is a supplementary video that sits alongside the mass numbers and isotopes video. It's designed so that you can have a bit more practice at the kinds of calculations that use relative atomic mass. As we saw in that first mass numbers and isotopes video, the relative atomic mass of a sample is the average or mean mass of the atoms in that sample compared to 1 12th of the mass of the carbon 12 isotope. The carbon-12 isotope is referred to as the reference standard, and everything else is compared to that. We can also express this as a mathematical equation, where the relative atomic mass is the average mass of one atom of an element, divided by one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon-12. There are a couple of different versions of this equation, so there's one that's expressed in terms of moles instead of in atoms, but to save confusion, I'm just giving you my favourite. In AQA A-level chemistry, you always give relative atomic mass to one decimal place. The question will tell you to do this, but it's useful to have that convention already embedded in your head. Annoyingly, some questions will give you a relative atomic mass that has two decimal places if you're going to use it in a calculation. But if you're calculating it for yourself, you always record it to one decimal place. Isotopes are atoms of the same element. And since we define an element based on the number of protons it has, that means that isotopes will always have the same number of protons. Since we know that in a neutral, uncharged atom, there are the same number of protons and electrons, that also means that isotopes share an electron configuration. What's different about them is the number of neutrons. This means that their chemical properties will be the same, because chemical properties like how you react with water or acid or oxygen are based on the electron configuration, and this is the same with the two isotopes. However, physical properties like mass, density, radioactivity will be different. If I have a sample, whether that sample is all of the atoms in the world of a particular element or just the atoms in a box in front of me, I can work out the relative atomic mass of that sample by using the abundance of those different isotopes and also their mass numbers. For instance, if I have a sample that contains two stable isotopes of lithium and 90% of the atoms are lithium-7 and 10% of the atoms are lithium-9, then I can work out that the relative atomic mass of that sample will be 90% of 7 and 10% of 9 added together, which gives me 7.2. I can do this regardless of the number of isotopes of that sample. So in A-level chemistry, it's very common for us to have a sample that contains four or five different stable isotopes in it. When it comes to this kind of question, there are three mathematical approaches that you can take. For working out relative atomic mass from percentage abundance data, they're all equally valid, although you may have a personal preference. In the first approach, I use the percentage button to work out 90% of seven and 10% of nine. Personally, I find that this is the one that is most likely to go wrong if students are not familiar with their own calculator. In the second approach, which is what I personally prefer, we use decimals. So we use 0.9 in place of 90% and 0.1 in place of 10%. However, there is a third approach in which we use the abundance of each isotope divided by the total abundance. Now, this might look quite long-winded because at the moment it's just working out to be exactly the same as the one above it. 90 divided by 100 gives us 0.9, 10 divided by 100 gives us 0.1, so why would we bother? Well, the big advantage of this final method is that it's the only one that works if you're given absolute abundance data rather than relative abundance data. So let's say I said to you, here's the box, and in that box there are 18 atoms of lithium-7 and there are two atoms of lithium-9. Well, at that point, you might just say, OK, but I can work out that 18 plus 2 is 20 and work out some percentages and go from there. And that's fine because those numbers work out exactly. But sometimes your total abundance is going to be a horrible number, like 27. And if you then work out relative abundance from the data you've got, you're going to be introducing error. Whereas if you just use this method and divide everything by the total abundance, then you're going to get your most accurate answer. Whichever one of those three methods you prefer, now's your opportunity to pause the video and check that you're confident calculating relative atomic mass. For the first one, you're going to need to work out 20% of 16 and add that to 80% of 18. So hopefully you worked out that 20% of 16 was 3.2 and 80% of 18 is 14.4. And when we add those together, you get 17.6. Then for hydrogen, we get 1.1. And then for carbon, we get 12.4, chlorine, we get 35.2, and phosphorus, we get 31.4.
For something slightly jazzier and a little bit more intimidating, but not actually any harder, you might be asked to do a little bit of additional arithmetic before you get to your chemistry. This question is very similar to one about strontium that AQA wrote in 2023. So we're given a sample of rubidium and it contains isotopes with masses of 85, 86 and 87. 4% of the sample is that middle isotope, rubidium 86, and the other isotopes are in a 3 to 1 ratio. Calculate the percentage abundance of 87 rubidium in this sample. Well, we're going to have to do that anyway, but they're explicitly calling out that we need to do it and write it down somewhere. Then use your answer to deduce the relative atomic mass of the sample. And then they're also reminding us, as we said at the start, to give our answer to one decimal place. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to write out an equation that uses the masses and the abundances. Since I know here that I'm working with percentage abundance data, all of my abundances are going to add up to be 100%. Next, I'm going to substitute in the other information I have. So that's the masses of the three isotopes and the fact that I've got 4% of this isotope 86. Now I need to include the abundances of the other two. So I've been told that they're in a three to one ratio of 85 to 87. So I'm going to make 87x and I'm going to make 85 3x. So I therefore know that 100% of all of the atoms together is made up of this 4% that is already the 86 and then the 4x. So based on that, x is 24 and I can say that I've got 24% of my isotope with a mass of 87 and 72% is my isotope with a mass of 85. Now I can calculate what 85 times 72 is, 86 times 4 is and 87 times 24 is. And I add those all together and then divide by 100 because my total abundance is 100. And that gives me a relative atomic mass of 85.52. But remember, we need to give our relative atomic mass to one decimal place. So our final answer is going to be 85.5. Now that I'm comfortable working with this formula, I can start to use it to work out masses and abundances from the relative atomic mass. In this question, I have two isotopes in a three to one ratio which have a relative atomic mass of 10.5. The more abundant isotope has a mass number of 10 and I need to work out what the mass number of the second isotope is. Now at this point, it's entirely up to you whether you want to use three and one as the abundances and put them over a total of four or whether you're happier working with percentages. Personally, I quite like percentages, so that's the route that I'm going to take. So my abundance one is going to be 75 and my abundance two is going to be 25 and my total abundance is 100. We've already said that the relative atomic mass is 10.5 and the most abundant isotope has a mass of 10. And let's call the mass of the other isotope X. Now, at this point, I want to start multiplying out some of these brackets and crucially stopping this being a fraction because fractions are a pain. So I'm going to multiply everything by 100. And that's going to give me 1050 is equal to 750 plus 25 X. So if I take 750 away from both sides, then I'm left with 300 is 25 X. And therefore X is 12. Here is a similar set of questions for you to have a go at. In each instance, the first number is the relative atomic mass. You've only been given the abundance of one of the isotopes, but that's OK because it's percentage abundance and percentage abundance will always add up to 100. Therefore, you can work out the second abundance relatively easily. You then need to write out an equation which connects the abundance of the two isotopes using a letter like X for the second mass and then solve this to work out the value of X. So with a bit of luck, you've worked out that the missing isotopes are iron 58, titanium 49, chromium 54, molybdenum 98 and yttrium 87. So we've looked at an example where you might be given the percentage abundance of one isotope, but not the other. But what if you're given neither? Well, we know that the total relative abundances must add together to make 100. So if we call one of them X, then the other one must be 100 take X, assuming there's only two of them. Incidentally, your life will always be easier if you make the heaviest isotope the one with an abundance of X. If you don't do this, the maths will still math, but you will have to deal with negative numbers at the end, which is just a little bit of a pain. So we have an equation set up like this. So I have the first mass, which is my lighter isotope, multiplied by 100 take away X, and my second mass multiplied by X, and then the whole lot divided by 100, which is the total abundance. So let's look at this in action. 
A sample of oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16.1. It contains atoms of oxygen 16 and oxygen 17. Determine the relative abundance of each. I start by substituting in the numbers that I already know. So the relative atomic mass was 16.1, the lighter isotope is 16, and the heavier isotope is 17. If I multiply everything by 100 to stop it from being a fraction, I'm left with 1610 is equal to 1600 take 16x plus 17x. So you can see that the minus 16x and the plus 17x are going to cancel out to just give us x. So we're going to have 10 equals x. And this is why it's good to have our heavier isotope being the one that is x. But we can't quite stop yet because the question didn't ask us to solve for x. The question asked us to determine the relative abundance of each isotope. So if x is 10, that tells me that I've got 10% of oxygen 17 and therefore I must have 90% of oxygen 16. Here are five more questions following the same format. So we've got our relative atomic mass and then the two isotopes, so iron 56 and iron 58, for instance. The first thing you need to do is to write an expression that has one of them being x and the other one being 100 take away x. Then you need to solve that expression and work out what the abundance of the two isotopes will be. So pause the video, give it a go, and then we can check if you've got them right. So hopefully you've worked out that iron 56 and iron 58 make up 80% and 20% of the sample. Titanium 48 and 49 make up 98% and 2% respectively. Chromium 52 and 54 are 60% and 40%. The molybdenum isotopes are 95 and 5% and yttrium are 70 and 30%. Of course, not every question is only going to involve two isotopes. In this question, we have a sample of magnesium with three isotopes with a relative atomic mass of 24.31. Like I said earlier, you are always going to be asked to give your relative atomic masses to one decimal place, but in the question, you may be given one to multiple decimal places. This sample contains 84% magnesium 24, and you need to figure out the remaining abundances of the isotopes with masses of 25 and 26. This looks a bit scary, but they've actually given us all the information that we need. So what we can do is remove magnesium 24 from the equation and then just carry on as if we just had two isotopes. So just like before, we have an expression for relative atomic mass, only this time it's got three isotopes in it instead of just two. So we know that 24.31, that's our relative atomic mass, is made up of 24 multiplied by 84, and then 25 multiplied by 16 take x and 26 multiplied by x and that whole lot is divided by 100. Now, you might just be panicking at the moment and thinking, well, where did 16 take x come from? So remember, all of the abundances have to add up to 100. And we already know the magnesium 24 is 84 of that. So 100 take away 84 gives me 16 left over. So that final 16% must be made up of the magnesium 26. And I've made that one x because it's heavier, so it makes the maths easier and then magnesium 25 gets the leftovers. So that's where the 16 take x has come from. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 100 to stop it from being a fraction. So that turns my left hand side into 2431. Then I'm going to have the term that is made out of the 24 isotope and the fact that its abundance is 84. So that gives me 2016. Then for my isotope 25, the 16 multiplied by that 25 gives me 400, and then I've got minus 25x. And then for my final isotope, I've got 26x. So if I take all of that and I simplify it and gather terms together, then what I'm left with is 15 is x. So remember, I then need to actually answer the question, what is the relative abundance of the different isotopes? So I had defined x as being the abundance of the isotope that has a mass of 26. So therefore, I've got um, 15 percent of magnesium 26 and that leaves me with one percent of magnesium 25. Here are five final questions for you to have a go at. So for each one you're given the relative atomic mass and also the relative abundance of one of the isotopes. So that means you can effectively remove that from your calculations and whatever abundances are left over can be split between the two other isotopes. So for this first one if you've got 40 percent of iron 57 that means that when you're putting together your expression you're going to have an x term and then 60 take away x for the other isotope because 40% of the isotopes are already accounted for. 
So pause the video and see how you get on. For this first question, we've got 50% of iron 56 and 10% of iron 58. Then titanium 49 is making up 8% and titanium 50 is making up 1%. Then for chromium, we've got 85 and 10. For molybdenum, we've got 2 and 9. And for yttrium, we've got 10 and 70%. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found that a useful opportunity to practice a bunch of different styles of relative atomic mass question. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.